Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to try and answer the question, is 16 gigabytes of RAM enough for high-end gaming in 2024? So just to give you a little rundown of my system, I'm running a AMD 5800X3D with an NVIDIA 4080 Super Founders Edition. I'm also running all of this on an MSI B550A Pro motherboard. Now I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM in my system, so what we're going to do, we're going to run a load of benchmarks with the 32 gig installed. I'm going to rip half of it out and then we'll rerun it all in 16 gig so we can tell the difference and hopefully it will give you an idea whether it's worth you spending the extra money to go for a 32 gig kit or if you're on a bit of a budget maybe you can save some money and make do with the 16 gigabyte kit. So let's jump into the benchmarks and find out. So we're going to kick things off at the high end. We are running a 4080 Super after all so we're running the Forza Horizon 5 benchmark in 4k at the extreme preset so we've got 16 gigabytes on the left and our 32 gigabyte result on the right so as we work through the benchmark you can see that really if you look at the averages there's not a lot in it i mean at points the 32 gig goes below the 16 gig however if we just keep an eye on those 0.1 percent lows in particular you can see that on the 32 gig kit it's just a little bit more stable so it's not like you're going to get loads of extra performance by adding the extra RAM, but it will make the lows higher. And that's important because if you have a high average, but then you have quite low 0.1% lows and 1% lows, that's kind of what gives the feeling of a really choppy experience. Something feels off and maybe you can't quite put your finger on what it is. Quite often, that's what it is. Moving over to Cyberpunk, we're still running at 4K and we're running at the RT Ultra preset. Now the first thing to note here is those 0.1% lows. Look at the 16 gigabyte kit, we're already about 10 FPS lower. Now of course this will recover as we progress through the benchmark because these are values that are plotted over time. So as the averages kind of keep up those 0.1% lows, those values will creep up. But the point is at the start of the benchmark there were some stutters on the 16 gigabyte kit that we didn't have on the 32. So, same story really, it's the averages, not a lot of difference, but the lows with the 32 gig kit do rise up a little bit to give you a more overall smoother experience. The other thing to keep in mind here is that we're basically GPU limited, so I'd be interested to see if we remove that GPU limit, and we will look at this later on in the video, so stay tuned. Maybe we'll get some bigger differences in the averages, in the 1% lows, as well as the 0.1% lows that we're seeing now. Taking a quick look at F123, and honestly, there was nothing really to report. The 16 gigabyte and the 32 gigabyte kit, they were each within like one FPS of each other, and that is looking at the minimum FPS values, the average FPS values, and the maximum. I couldn't get any difference between the two. So with that in mind, we will move straight on to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. This is running in 4K uh, with the ultra settings, and we're also running DLSS quality because without DLSS, it really was a little bit of a struggle and immediately you can see that the 16 gigabyte kit right at the start of the benchmark has a massive stutter so those one percent lows down to 16 fps while the 32 gigabyte kit is able to keep up in the 80s and again you know these values will recover as we progress through the benchmark you can see the one percent lows already starting to creep up into the 40s as we kind of progress because it's all plotted over time of course but this is all to say that you know the, av the average FPS, there's really nothing between it, but those lows, there is a big difference. So I can hear you all typing away in the comments already that all I'm doing is running benchmarks that are baked into games, and that's not representative of what it's actually like to play games. I hear you, I get it. So with that in mind, we're going to walk through a little bit of Cyberpunk. This is 4K RT Ultra, and as you can see, um, the 32 gigabyte kit is using more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. We're sort of hovering around 17.9 ish, whereas on the 16 gigabyte kit, we're around the 14 gigabyte mark. So, again, if the RAM is there, it will be used. But look at those figures. There's basically nothing in it. And again, I think that is because we are GPU limited, because the GPU is going to be our main bottleneck. So, we're, we're unlikely to see too much in uh, the way of bad results coming from the RAM or the CPU at this point because the GPU is just such a hard limit. Coming back to Forza Horizon 5 now and I did the same race um, on the 16 gig and the 32 gigabyte kit. This is running 4K on the extreme setting so again looking at those uh, numbers they're very very similar. 
you're going to get minor differences run to run which is understandable um, but the average is very very similar the 0.1 percent lows are very similar the one percent lows very similar and again we are gpu limited so i think that's going to be you know the main thing that kind of prevents us seeing major differences in the results here however i would like to point out that i did multiple runs of this stuff and there was an instance on the 16 gigabyte kit on one of the runs where we were just kind of driving along nicely and then we we, we got a stutter which made the 0.1% lows dip down pretty low whereas I did not experience this on the 32 gigabyte kit at all. So obviously when we were running Cyberpunk earlier we were talking about how we were GPU limited and that was kind of preventing us from seeing big swings in performance between 16 and 32 gigabytes of RAM so we've dialed it down to 1080p i mean we're still running the gpu fairly hard because we are still in the rt ultra preset however this does give a little bit more room for the ram to help out as you can see using just over 16 gigabytes of ram on the 32 gig kit and obviously on the 16 gig kit we're running lower at 14.4 ish but look at those one percent lows they are nicely above what we get on the 16 gigabyte kit not by much but it just gives you a slightly smoother experience also the average does seem to be a little bit higher as well once we jump into the game as well you can see that already on the 16 gigabyte kit we have had a stutter with a 0.1 percent low dropping down as low as 21 fps whereas you look at the 32 gigabyte kit and things are nice and stable 1% lows seem to be about 10 FPS higher as we speak here at the moment and the averages actually are higher as well. So it does seem like the 32 gigabyte kit is paying dividends in this case using just over 16 gigabytes of RAM kind of flirting with 17 on the 32 gigabyte kit. So even at 1080p if the RAM is there the system and the game it will use it and you can see that we're going past 16 gigabytes here. I also just want to mention briefly that I did a similar video to this a long time ago on my flight simulation channel. I'll leave a link in the description if by chance you happen also to be a keen flight simmer. And one thing that I always used to find on the flight sim is that I would be coming into land and when you're kind of coming into land in a big airliner, quite often, especially in an Airbus, you'll leave the throttles in auto throttle. So the plane is basically doing all the throttle management for you. Now, I've got a dedicated uh, throttle quadrant that I use. And what I would do just at about 50 feet before you know you touch down, I would grab hold of the throttle quadrant and I would bring it to idle. And it's almost like then with 16 gigabytes of RAM, that at that point, as soon as I touch the throttles, it's almost like the throttle sent a message to be like, oh, I'm back, I'm awake. And then the sim would go uh, and stutter. And then just before touchdown, you'd get a nasty little stutter. Again, that would kind of represent itself within with like low 0.1% lows. I upgraded to 32 gigabytes of RAM and that problem went away. I've never, ever seen it since. So that's just like an anecdotal bit of information there for you. And also kind of taxiing around, um, you know, highly detailed airports, that's kind of where the sim is under the most stress really when you're on the ground at a big kind of fancy airport and it's not like going to 32 gigabytes of ram made a massive difference in terms of your overall average fps but again similar story here just those one percent lows the 0.1 percent lows they were much much higher well i say much much higher a little bit higher which you know when you're dealing with fps numbers that are generally quite low in the sim anything is uh worth having it just gives you a more smooth more stable experience which in a, in a simulation kind of product that is kind of the whole idea that's what you're after so the whole point of this video really was to find out if 16 gigabytes is still enough in 2024 for high-end gaming is it worth going to 32 gigabytes is it worth that extra money it's not like going to 32 gigabytes of ram is going to make a huge amount of difference in terms of your overall fps but what it will do is that it will bring your lows up. It will make your lows more consistent. So you're not going to maybe get quite as many dips as you otherwise would if you had 16 gigabytes of RAM. But, you know, I've been in a situation where, you know, 50, 60, 70 quid actually does make a big difference to the overall cost of your build. And, you know, if you're in a position where that is going to make or break it for you, then go with 16. I don't think you're going to get a bad experience at all and just... Try and get yourself a motherboard where you've got an upgrade path in the future. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I've certainly enjoyed making it. It's been a lot of fun. Um, thank you all again for subscribing to the channel. It really does mean the world. It's great now that we're in the YouTube partner program. Get subscribed for more. Hit the bell button. Hit the like button. Do all the YouTube stuff. You know what to do. Until next time, take the very best care of yourselves. And I'll see you in the next video.